actually said, I see you, which is an African tradition. And so when a child walks in the classroom and the person that they want to develop a what with is their teacher that does not greet them, how does the day start for them? You see, it's a simple thing, but then it's not if you're looking at it from someone else's lens. Now, that person is not a born, breastfed racist. They're just operating out of their axiology. Understanding of what, you know, what education is, you know, and, and how hip hop affects education they can. But education for me is the conveying of skills that will bring about the acquisition, the sustenance, preservation of power, and the defense of that power. If you're educating a child and you're not trying to motivate that child to achieve power, stop. I coined the term culturally relevant pedagogy to describe their work. And more recently, I've come to see how the culture that invigorates and enlivens today's students, hip hop, is a primary driver in helping maintain culturally relevant pedagogy viability and usefulness. It is our responsibility as educators to make sure that we are intentional about multicultural education for every child, for every child. I want to say that when I was asked to speak on Senate Bill 103, I could not find it. I could not find it. That's a statement to how far buried this bill is. In 1999, you had a core of people come together. I finally located a PDF file that had the bill within it. That's unconscionable because that move means that we've moved to the back burner, something that's so important to the development of our children. If we think about multicultural education, it is intentional. It is intentional. It has to lie within us, within our soul. Things like this, this bill that we couldn't find, this is over a decade and a half old, and it is time for Oregon to make this implementation, and we always have a reason why not. And it's because, you know, ballot measure five happened in 1992, and it's because we had a recession in 2002, it's because we had a recession in 2008, and it's because we didn't have staff to do this work at the Department of Education. My commitment to you simply is this. I do not care what the budget is. I don't care what the, what the economy looks like. I don't care what people say you're gonna have or not have the Department of Education when it comes to staffing. We are gonna have staff in the Department of Education that's gonna be committed to closing the achievement gap in the state of Oregon. They're gonna do that work specifically. They're gonna have goals that they set and we're gonna be intentional about this work. And I don't care what anybody allows us to do or doesn't allow us to do because quite frankly, we don't need to ask the legislature to fund people to get this done. We need to allocate the people to get that done within the FTE that we have. Because I'm going to tell you, it's going to take more than the Karanjas of the world to get this job done. It's going to take more than Mr. Sexton to get this work done. It's going to take more than our legislators to get it done. Quite frankly, the legislature is the least to get it done because you have to do so much compromising of 90 people as well as the governor. So it's going to take parents, it's going to take you, it's going to take teachers becoming engaged in what this is all about. If it's important enough, then you got to give your time up.